Howdy folks! Um, so, I'm not going to do too much painting in, in today's video, but what I am going to do is show you some uh, three works in progress that I've got. Two are paintings, one's a textile thing with printmaking. So what we got up here, I can't really tell what shows. This is the liquidy wash underpainting and there is a drawing in here as well. First I'll show you what the reference is. And this is um, an inked uh, spread from a graphic novel, comic book sort of thing I'm working on featuring our buddy Miles who we've already seen running for office. So this is Miles at the carnival. And I'm doing a painting version of it. Let me uh, kind of zoom in so you can see some of the underdrawings. There he is in, uh, he's hiding from the bottom. There he is in the bottom. He's got his candy apple and his uh, uh, cotton candy. And we've got the uh, concession stand in behind him and all this. So this is, I mean, it, I gritted it out. You can kind of, you know, you can sort of in some parts see that. Um, obviously I didn't do that, draw the grid there, but I took a scan of it and um, drew the grid elsewhere. So once the underdrawing is done, that was done in paint markers, same as I did final detailing on the Miles um, election painting. I then went in over with super watered down acrylic to, um, to get it all drippy for this background. The idea is to knock out any white because as you may have noticed on the vote for miles when I get close to details I like to kind of avoid getting in close too close sometimes um, in order to make sure I'm not like painting over stuff I've already painted so this way we have this crazy bright color um, mix so and this one is gonna be actually for a silent auction. The women's group at my church is hosting a diocesan convention next um, next spring. And of course, we would like some art for it. People look at me and it's like, well, you're an artist, Pira. I'm sitting there going like, yeah, I draw alcoholic punk rocker rats. I don't know. But then I remembered I had this scene. So, you know, this is Miles when he's not being a womanizing little twerp. So, He's distracted with candy and uh, sugar, and therefore he's on his best behavior. Other than the gluttony thing, I guess. But, you know, figured it was kind of appropriate. And in the background we'll have um, some rides and whatnot. So my next step on this is probably actually going to be to go up into the very top. And if you can, let me keep zooming in. But, you know, I've got things like a pit and pendulum type of ride um, in the background. I will probably do a very light kind of, not quite a wash because I don't want it to run, but a really thin layer of blue. And I also realized when I started drawing in um, where in the reference photo we have... Um, I need to zoom out so that's the focus there we go where we have the um roller coaster i kind of realized that was gonna be a nightmare if i try and draw it in and then paint around the drawing so some of those details aren't in the under drawing because it's just like well i'm gonna paint the sky and then i'll get the paint markers to draw in the really fine details for the back um same with like you can sort of maybe just see dots there those are heads of people in line We'll see how much detail actually ends up coming out as we go. I do have a backup plan if um, this drawing, this painting starts driving me insane because <laughs> there's so much detail in it. But uh, anyway, so this is our first um, work in progress. It's Miles at the Carnival. Now for the next project, it is textiles, but there's multiple, um, well, actually I have two textiles projects. So I took a workshop at Machosa International Summer School for the Arts, MISA.ca, 
Um, and it's all about like textile exploration. So we did a bunch of stuff. I'm going to just put this one up here. This is the next work in progress. So this is a quilting cotton. I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the print there. It's a basic quilting cotton. What I have done on top of that is um, a mix of fabric markers. This is my other character, Noah, from Noah's Archipelago. I think I've stuck him in one or two of um, the paint with me's as an example. Yeah, when I was talking about where, how I signed. So this is Noah. He is surrounded by fig leaves. <laughs> so it's a bit of a play on Adam in the Garden of Eden, right? And kind of the oh crap, what now thing. I think the title of this is going to be Betwixt the Apple and the Fig Leaf. A um, lot of fabric marker stuff, but also um, some thin down, like screen printing ink used in uh, block printing in this case. I had done a quick lino car cut, also just painted on with a brush. Am I pointing at things are in there? Here, this was painting on with a brush. This one, this one's in frame. Painting on the same type of uh, silk screening, thin down silk screening ink, uh, textile paint with a brush, uh, more marker work. This is primarily paint markers, but then like I said, I had carved some leaves on um, Lino um, Speedy Cut and used them as block printing. The next step is I'm gonna put a thin layer of probably Probably just like white pre-shrunk flannel, I think, or yeah, I better pre-shrink it because this will shrink when it gets washed, but um, the flannel will shrink even more. So pre-shrunk flannel underneath the different cotton in behind, and then I'm going to start doing some hand embroidery. What I'm thinking is kind of apple motif, like dotted lines sort of thing, and then I may end up layering on, like I have a bunch of like vintage doily, crochet doilies that I've gotten at thrift stores and stuff like that. So I may take some of those, dye them red, like apple red, and then um, applique those in the corners or whatnot to kind of give this sense that Noah, who is cosplaying as Adam, is kind of having this uh, existential crisis. Uh, I, when I posted photos of this in the current state, to the Noah's Archipelago um, social media. I think what I put as the caption was uh, something to the effect of Noah loves cheeseburgers because of the epigenetic memory of what happened at f the, time, the first time a dude listened to his wife about eating more health food. It was something to that effect. But so we'll have some apple motifs brought on. I have no idea how long this will take me. If I focused on it, I could probably finish it in a week, but Focus? What's that? Squirrel. Yeah, anyways, um, so this is one piece that I did at Missa. And the other piece, I'm not going to show some, I've got some other wall hangings, but they're not relevant to this. Anyways, did um, a mix of screen printing and block printing on a bunch of different quilting cotton fabrics. And then the plan is I've got... Um, well, first, I'm going to show where things are so far. So this is one. Okay, I guess we're just doing this vertically. So this is one piece, but I have like two different green fabrics and two different orange fabrics. So you can see here, underneath here, there was a screen printing where it's like a green so tone on tone that didn't show up much, but then it acted as a resist. Um, and it was like a very tiny sort of, uh, where am I saying screen printing? No, that was a block printing with the teeny tiny uh, tone on tone checkerboard. And then I used bigger stamps. And it, even though you couldn't really see the green on green, it acted as a resist. So you get this kind of brick of effect in there. Um, and then if I pan up, Similar, there is this one was a, there was a screen printing that was again green on green, um, and it was like a harlequin diamond pattern, and it didn't really show up except it acted as a resist 
when I went to block print the silver. So um, that's one of the fabrics I did at Missa. Let me grab another. I don't even know which one of these is the right side, but this gingham. So that is a, the spiral is a screen print where I use mylar to cut that out. And then if we zoom in, you can see some of these little, and I don't know that they look very fluorescent in the camera, but they are like a fluorescent orange, just filling in certain of the squares and then using it with um, a fabric marker and then with a pink fabric marker, putting in little plus signs. So that's another. I'm going to show these first and I'll explain, because if I try to explain without showing it, it would probably make even less sense. And this, again, a quilting fabric, had the spiral pattern, did the uh, screen printing where I cut out with an open screen and then cut um, basically a mask or stencil out of mylar, screen printed on with thin down ink, and then block printed with the kind of gold. I am pointing at stuff that's not in the camera. There we go. <laughs> Here I am doing my best fan of white to nobody. So you can see there's like a block printed spiral on top and then there's, um, there's also some like circles that were just the ends of like little foam tubes. So we got this layering and then the other green this one and let's zoom out so we see that and this is just a plain green like chartreuse um, solid quilting cotton and then again we have this sort of s motif wave motif cut out of mylar that was then screen printed through with, and the dots are also from that and then using fabric markers to add detail onto that so these are the first layer okay um, what's happening next is basically the idea was, uh, because I've got Miles, I've got Ricky, right? And I have a kind of, um, I did do a block print of Miles, so I'll show that. Right. Um, what I wanted to do is my studio, not this room that I'm filming in, but another room in the house is the old family room and it has like a half wall. So there's this empty space. And I had the idea, it just popped in my mind during this workshop of making a Ricky and Miles bunting. So excuse the uh, crinkling while I get out the paper that has my diagram. And I will zoom in, but you get the idea. So I'll just show one half because it's kind of identical. There's a Miles side and a Ricky side. So the fabrics I've just shown you are going to be made into pennants. So and I'll zoom in even more. So like this one is obviously this green, right? And then that or did a dyslexic on here. So this one would be the great gingham with the swirls. That would be the orange with the tinier swirls, the darker green with the silver, right? Um, I also have, this is listed as cheese texture. I have some orange uh, fabric that already had um, kind of a mottled orange effect. And then I'm gonna use some tan to do block prints of the characters. But in addition to that, on these um, four patterns, I have some stamps that I made. So I will do stamp printing with different motifs. So Miles is a money grubby little guy, as we talked about before. So I've got some money. He also, he's a martini drinker. There's a Ricky cartoon where Ricky's uh, telling him it's National Beer Day and Miles is being a snob. Another money stamp, because um, you know Miles prefers martinis, and then I thought gold bar. I actually realized after the fact I have some like gold lame fabric, so I'm gonna try to print on that with black ink and then cut those off and then 
uh, applique them. So these will kind of be divvied up into giant triangles and there'll be a couple in each color for Ma with Miles motifs and then Ricky's motifs. Well, Ricky likes beer. I don't know how much detail we'll show into. Uh, yeah, it's in focus. So you can see the foam. This would probably turn out better on paper than on um, fabric, but we'll find out, eh? Um, Ricky also likes mushrooms. And not just on his pizza. Um, speaking of pizza, I carved a little pizza block. And then in the very center, I'm going to have this wedge of cheese, which is based on the Ricky D. Rat logo. Um, I do have, I actually have like a two layered, like a background, and then that's Miles that I just showed on the yellow. But lining them up, honestly, is kind of a pain in the butt, so I'm probably just going to do the one layer. Um, and I have one that I carved last year that was Ricky. So we're going to print these guys onto a different kind of flesh tony kind of fabric. Then we're going to print the motifs on all of these, cut out giant pennants. Um, and then, oh yeah, I mentioned uh, the orange, the kind of plainer orange. I also have a cheese bubble, pretty big block that I can do in multiple layers in a tone on tone. So. Anyways, once those are all done, we cut them out. We'll probably do some minor quilting on them. And we sew them into a giant pennant that should be about 14 or 15 feet across. And then they go on the studio uh, to decorate that kind of open space. So that's another work in progress. This is a monster thing. Hopefully I have it done by the spring. But hey, you know, it's for my own purposes. So there really isn't a deadline other than my attention span and uh, my ability to remember what all these components are for. <laughs> so there's that. But I think what I'm going to do, well, I showed the one little block with the, um, with the miles where there's four blocks of him, kind of, um, I guess you could say Andy Warhol style. Excuse me while I put these back where they belong um, so I don't lose them. But I think I'm in the kind of flesh-colored um, fabric. I think I'm going to do a Andy Warhol style block. And here's an example I did on a blue. Stay. Hang on. In order to get this to stay, I'm going to have to use a little clamp thing on the easel. There. Which probably won't really work, but it'll sort of work well enough. So, so I did this kind of Andy Warhol style miles times nine thing, and that also has underneath there's some um, pink, very pale pink um, screen printing, which was that was just done with an open screen and um, actually masking tape to make the forms, and then I put uh, miles down on top with black. Uh, screen printing ink and I use some of the same little swirly blocks and some like big circles and tiny circles and all that so I would be looking to do something similar to this in the flesh colored blocks for each of those you know the miles and the fact that they're different size and shape that's fine it's got the face and then I would you know to kind of pick whichever was the best to do like the pennant that had their faces in it so you'll get one pennant on one side that has Miles and the other that has Ricky, but then the the ones that have the motifs for either they'll alternate. So it's not like one side Miles only, one side Ricky. There'll be a little bit of integration. So that's sort of some textile stuff. Although there will be fabric painting involved because I'll use fabric markers and that sort of stuff. Now. Now we get into the point where I take that down so I don't ruin it because I've got something to show that I'll actually work on today. And we're back and I probably actually have to shift the camera. Why is it a blank canvas? Well, because I'm not working on that canvas. 
I'm working on one in front, but that's too tall for the table easel. Um, hang on, let me move the camera so you can actually see what I'm talking about. This is as zoomed out as it can be from this position. So hopefully, now that I've moved the camera, that's better. But basically I need it to uh, prop up a taller canvas. And that is, well, we talked about Miles in the last painting that I was working on the last, well, and the one that I showed that I'm also still working on. Now it's time for his buddy, Ricky. Ta-da! I will zoom in to show the details. Um, so this is a version. I was gonna film drawing him in with the grid, except I was doing it late last night. I was just like, you know what? This makes the this involves the pens that make the really annoying scratchy noise, and I just didn't feel like it, honestly. Uh, but you could tell it was uh, a grid reference. Let me hold up the print. So that's a, just a black and white print of that that I drew in. And then um, in the background, he looks very weird when it's the grid drawing. But that was the case with Miles too. And I'm going to look in the notebook and find... Oh, hey, it actually opened fairly easily. It's from this cartoon. So Baby's girlfriend saying, Ricky, do you like my new dress? I think the answer is yes, eh? He's standing up at attention and eyeballs bugged out and drooling. But anyway, so we're going to paint Ricky. Um, and that actually, that painting, I should probably not have my back turned while I'm doing this because it sounds weird. This painting is actually going very, very close to where it's going to be painted. If I take that down, uh, well, this canvas kind of hides it, but you can see the wall hanging there. That's hiding the electrical panel for my house. I kind of still like the wall hanging, but eh, it is something about at home sense for 25 bucks, you know. So we're gonna do this painting of Ricky and then he is going to um, find his home guarding the electrical panel, uh, which could give a whole other reason for why his hair is standing on end. Um, but let's uh, do some little zooming in bits, so I like the bit where his eyeballs are the bottoms of the uh, exclamation points and uh, he's drooling with his tongue out, tail standing right at attention. There's some weird noise, I don't know if you can hear it, but the squirrel is being screwed up and weird. Go be screw screwed up and weird somewhere else. And don't plant any more hazelnuts in my garden, you little shit. I'm not a fan of squirrels. Um, you know, he doesn't pay my property taxes, but he thinks he has a say in what goes in my garden. Anyway, so there we got Ricky with his exaggerated head and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be the next painting. Now, where I said we're going to work on it. This needs one of those colorful wash things. So we will, I'm going to put a little edit point so I can get my stuff together and then we're going to start making a big old mess uh, with really wet watered down paint. Hang in there. Alright, so I got a container of water, I got my fat ass um, flat brush and some paint colors. Overall I think the painting's final top layer is going to have a lot of white, um, pink and purple. Uh, I mean, there'll be hints of the lawn that's in behind and whatnot, but I think for contrast purposes, I'm going to kind of have some yellow with focus, and that's fancy yellow medium, some dioxine uh, violet, fellow cerulean blue for some turquoise, this kind of sickly green gold, because that, that kind of color reminds me of, you know, the old punk rock stuff. Um, and a little bit of fallow green. So, fallow green, I will need a knife. So we're going to start splattering and mixing it super runny. 
I'm gonna start with the green gold first. And I'm gonna put like that much paint on and then just get my brush super saturated and almost like dribbling it in to the point where it's running wanting to actually escape from my table and just start mixing it in to the brush and kind of trying to not let it escape from the table and while I do that I'm going to move up and we'll start kind of at the top and uh, let things run down and kind of change colors as I go is usually how I do this so And I do kind of paint down as well as just laying it draw or dribble. Um, I also get the edges and the top. But I'm doing this in a super messy kind of manner. I'm trying to basically get everything I just mixed to come down. This is why I put a, a painting that I'm not using in behind. One that's still wrapped in plastic because it kind of um, supports this canvas from tipping over but at the same time doesn't actually you know it's not going to matter if it gets goobered up now let's add do the same thing mixing up some turquoise with the thallus cerulean blue and adding more water onto the brush and we're gonna basically kind of drag. I will go over this with like pure water on the brush as well to kind of make sure that it gets, um, that it doesn't end up as like a paint layer so much as a wash. Um, and even doing like this, kind of scrubbing over it. And I love what's starting to happen you might be able to see is it's starting to run which is great so get even more watery and runny I may actually not even bother with the uh, fallow green because that's kind of a similar shade Here I'm kind of like scrubbing back with a water, water it down brush. So do that. Uh, I am going to add some purple because I do want even more dimension in this. Yeah, now most of this is not going to show, but it'll show just enough and in just the right places, right? But this is exactly how I did the, the background on um, the Miles at the Carnival. Thing I did the exact same thing also with um, the Vote for Miles. It's just by the time I was painting you couldn't see that anymore. So. Some of this will end up getting a little bit muddy looking, but some of it will have more unbroken color. So that's all good. So it gets pretty streaky. It does have, I probably should have left those particular drips. Uh, it does have some drips, it has some streaks. And let me peek around this side. Yeah, that's not... But the important thing is also we can still see the drawing. Now there's areas where, where it's not as um, as apparent, if I scroll in, 
or scroll in, zoom in. All right, so you can see oh, the drawing's still there. And it doesn't matter that this part is more opaque right now because that's in his hair, so like you know, we'll be able to figure that out. I do have a couple spots in the carnival drawing where it's really hard to see the marker underline, which is probably going a little bit overboard. And while I think of it, I'm gonna just kind of wipe around the bottom. I've got the, the canvas is up on little uh, triangular supports down there um, so that things can uh, spew off freely. Um, but I still have the color. I'm actually going to stick my head down under there and sort of notice where it's still white. Just because I do like wrapping my color around. And there you go. Um, so that is the first layer on Ricky Yowza. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll zoom in on a few areas so you can really sort of see. You do get a lot of texture coming in and shading. This does affect the color that goes on top, but that's kind of what makes it fun. And that's also why I wanted to go kind of opposite with blues and greens. Knowing that, you know, for example, his tail is peach, right? So, and his ears are pink. Um, we got that kind of detailing. And there'll be places where I may decide to dry brush on top, especially in the background, to let some of this show through. And there are his undersized feet, but... Now, Ricky would like you to understand that you should not make any assumptions about anything about him based on him having small feet. So that's an old wives tale. That's what he says. That's his story. He's sticking to it. Um, but yeah, so first layer done. Then we just leave it alone probably for an entire day. Um, I hope I will get some work done on the weekend on art. Might not be this one. I may let it um, dry. And oh, the other thing I wanted to draw attention to if I can go there. So you can kind of see some horizontal lines. This is a canvas that I actually uh, re -gessoed. So like obviously you buy them, they've got the gesso that's just like very smooth and uniform. I took a big fat brush and slapped another layer of gesso on and as you can tell it was mostly uh, widthwise. Um, but that's kind of fun because then it traps parts of uh, this color that's washed down and adds to the overall texture of the painting. I never used to do that. It's something I've only started recently. I didn't do that on the Miles, uh, Vote for Miles painting. I probably should have because um, I think there's a little too much of the canvas texture showing through. Whereas this kind of obliterates and gives a different texture. So anyways, that's kind of a neat aspect. Um, but yeah, so that's the extent of the paint with me. Uh, a couple, for today anyways, we have a couple of uh, works in progress and a first undercoat layer on, I don't even know what I'm going to call this painting yet, Ricky Yowza, something like that. Um, but yeah, there you go. So I'll catch you in the next video. Like I said, probably be, that'll be on the weekend. And then after that, probably not for like a week and a half. But uh, we will talk soon. Bye.